that you looked at this, uh, we did some just simple probability outcomes, uh, how many times things could happen, just simple probability. Today we're going to do some complex probability where we have more than one thing going on at a time. So the first example that I've got is the probability of, uh, and these are both two separate things, getting a six on a dice and right afterwards uh, flipping a tail on a coin. Okay, And we're going to figure out what the actual probability of that is. And it's actually pretty simple to do. All you need to do is find the chances of each one happening and then multiply them together. So for example, the probability of getting six on a dice is one out of six possible outcomes. Okay, You could get a one, two, three, or a five, or six. Only one of those is going to get us a six. So it's one out of the six outcomes. Tail on a coin would be one out of two. You have two outcomes. Only one of them is a tail, so it would be one out of two. Now all we have to do is multiply those together. Now we haven't talked about multiplying fractions at all this year, but it's very, very easy. All you have to do is multiply the numerator and multiply the denominator. So if I do 1 times 1, that's 1. Uh, 6 times 2 is 12. You've got a 1 out of 12 chance uh, of rolling a 6 on a dice, then flipping a tail on a coin. Now I want to take this a little bit further here. If we have 1 out of 12, I want to figure out what percentage that would be. Okay, This is really easy too, and it's just something we've never talked about. Uh, and this also works for like if you get a, a test score, something out of something else, this will work the same way to get a percentage. All I have to do is take the numerator, the top number, and divide it by the bottom number, which is 12. Now, you got to make sure you do this in the right order. It's not 12 divided by 1, it's 1 divided by 12. And we haven't talked about dividing decimals either, uh, so the good thing is I would just go ahead and just grab your calculator uh, that'd be the easiest way. I'd just put in 1, divide, 12. And on my calculator, I get a lot of, here's what I get. I can't show it on there. Here's what I get. I get 0 0.08333333. To figure out what percentage that is, we just want to take the first two decimals. Okay. So 0 just means there's 0 holes, so we don't need, even need to worry about that. First two decimals, 8%. Okay. So our chances of getting a six on a dice, and uh, a tail on a coin if we flip it back to back is going to be 0 .08, which is an 8% chance. So all you have to do is find uh, the probability separately and then multiply them together. That's all you have to do. All right, next one we're going to look at is just a coin. We're going to flip it five times. And I want to see what are the odds or what are my chances of getting five tails in a row. Okay? If you think about this and you've ever actually done this before, you know, it's pretty tough to get five tails in a row because every time you flip it, you're expecting a 50-50 chance. So it's pretty tough to get five in a row. But what is actually the odds or what's actually the percentage of? So let's figure that out. So all we have to do is find the outcome of all five flips because we're trying to flip it five times and get five tails. Uh, the first time we flip it, our odds are going to be one tail out of two outcomes. The next time we flip it, one tail out of two outcomes. The next time, one tail out of two, one tail out of two, and one tail out of two. Those are all our outcomes for the five flips. Okay. Now, we're going to times all these together just like we did on the other problem. We got all five of them. So my top is just going to be one, and then my bottom is going to be 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 would be 8, times another 2 would be 16, times another 2 would be 32. So the odds of getting 5 tails in a row are 1 in 32. Now let's figure that out as a percentage because that's always a pretty good way to gauge. Now, I mean, I know you can look at 1 out of 32 and say, that's almost nothing. Okay, That's almost a zero probability. It's really close to what we talked about on the other one. But on a calculator, if I just do 1 divide 32 in that order, 1 divide 32, now I'm going to get this, 0 0.03125. Okay? And it may have a 0 in front of it, meaning 0 hold, but that doesn't matter right now. So I need to know what percentage this is. Uh, just take the first two numbers. 
and it will call it 3%. Okay? So you have a 3% chance of flipping five tails back to back to back to back to back. 5% chance. Next one I'm going to show you is if we have five cards. And the cards are labeled 1, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we're going to draw cards, and each time we draw a card, we're going to put it back. So we're always going to have five cards. We're always going to have five outcomes. What I want to do is I want to find the odds of drawing a 1 three times in a row compared to the odds of drawing a 2 three times in a row. Okay. So our first one is going to be probability of 1 three times. And our second one is going to be the probability of two three times. And see how they compare. Okay, So we're going to have three trials for each one. Uh, first trial, uh, we're always having five outcomes here because we have five different things that we could draw. Five different chances, five different cards. So to get a one, the first time around, the probability would be two out of five probability of getting a 3 if we draw out of all 5 cards is just going to be, or getting a 2 is just going to be 1 out of 5. Okay. Next trial. Probability of getting a 1 is still going to be 2 out of 5 because we put the first one we got back. So we always had 5. Okay. Probability of getting a 2 the next time uh, on the next draw is still going to be 1 out of 5 because we only have one of them. 1 out of 5. And the last one, it's going to be the same thing. We got the same chance of drawing a 1 every single time. So that's going to be 2 out of 5. Uh, this one's going to be 1 out of 5. Now we just need to multiply together, and we'll compare them to see how they're different. Uh, if I times all these together, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So that's going to be 8 out of 5 times 5 would be 25 times another five, five quarters would be a dollar twenty-five, so it'd be 125. Okay. Uh, if we go down here, one times one times one, we've got one, and then the bottom number, five times five times five, is 125. Okay. Now we're looking at our chances here. Now it seems like up here that our chances are going to be a lot better to draw one three times in a row than a two three times in a row, because we've got two fifths chance here and one fifth chance here twice as many cards. But when we look at these, they're not really that much different. 8 out of 125 is a very small amount. 1 out of 25 is an even smaller amount. But we can figure out what the actual percentages are uh, by just doing 8 divided by 125. So if I do 8 divided by 125 on a calculator, that is 0.064 and then at the bottom, if I do 1 divided by 125, uh, it is, this is, this is even better, it's 0 .008. Okay, now let's think about this for a minute here. Here's a 6. So we can go the first two numbers, and there's 6%. Okay? Here, we just have two zeros. So it's really, really close to 0% or nothing. Now, we've got an 8 here. And if you remember anything about rounding, that would tell us to probably round this 1 up. So maybe I take this 8 off and round the 0 up to 1. Now we're at 1%. Okay? 1% is, is a lot less than 6%, probably not as much as you would think to start with. All right, I'm going to try to put one more on here on this video before I uh, run out of time on my 10 minutes here. But um, let's say we had a middle school raffle where they drew a name, and everybody's name was in it, uh, out of a hat or something, uh, and then they did it again the next day, and they put all the names back in. There's like 120 kids in the middle school. So I want to figure out what are the chances of winning that raffle two times in a row. Uh, so I have the numbers on here. 100, 1 in 120 is your chance. The next day it's 1 in 120. If I times these together, I get 1 out of 14,400. If I do 1 divided by this, this is the decimal I'm going to get. If you look at this, my first two numbers are 0, 0. So I basically have a 0% chance. My next number is a 0, and my next number is a 0, so I'm way less than a 1% chance. It's actually less than like even one-tenth of 1%.